Bidzy Small Business Society number 120. Thank you for joining us today on Bidzy Small Business Society. I'm Rob Beresoff. We talk to entrepreneurs and small business owners about what it takes to succeed as a small business owner. Connect with Bidzy Small Business Society at bidzy.com and grow your business. Bidzy.com is the website that connects customers and respected local businesses. Customers post projects for free in any of over 100 categories, including all types of home renovation, landscaping, cleaning services, photography, and many, many more. Now, if you're a business, Bidzy.com is a great way to find new customers because you are automatically notified each time a customer posts a project in your subscribed categories. So for example, let's say you own a roofing company and a customer posts a project in our roofing category. You are automatically notified via email or text and you can submit a bid at bidzy.com or use our internal chat system to introduce yourself to the customer and give them reasons why they should use you to complete their project. Monthly subscriptions start at $14.99. That's $14.99 per month for unlimited access to new customers and unlimited bidding at bidzy.com. Email rob at bidzy.com for more details or start your 30-day free trial now at bidzy.com. Thanks for listening to this episode of Bidzy Small Business Society. Today, I am talking to Jason Taylor. Jason is a writer, entrepreneur, consultant, and a veteran of the United States Air Force. He is also a newly developed angel investor, and his second book, Lead Yourself to Financial Success, will teach you how to become a great leader, add value, and increase overall prosperity. Jason consistently provides the tools, resources, and strategies for millennials and all entrepreneurs to help make our generation's leaders more efficient and more successful. Welcome to the show, Jason. Can you first tell us more about yourself, then about what projects you're working on today? Hey, thank you for having me. Um, Awesome intro, by the way. Hey, so I actually started uh, in the United States Air Force as uh, airman. Um, I worked at Knowledge Operations. I deployed to Afghanistan, enjoyed my time, traveled the world, and then uh, decided to go to college to Liberty University. Once I went to college, uh, I learned that there was a lot of opportunities in the contracting world, especially for uh, prior service uh, Air Force. So I went over to D.C., worked at the Pentagon, worked at Microsoft, and uh, my career kind of took off ever since. Wow, Jay, some pretty big names there. How do you enter into a partnership with the Pentagon and Microsoft? Uh, actually, utilizing my clearance. You know, uh, when I first started, I didn't know too much about the opportunities that the Air Force provided for you. I just knew they would provide room and board, and I would kind of get out of my situation because I grew up pretty poor. So uh, I went to the Air Force. They told me that, you know, they could give you a clearance, and what a clearance does is allows you access to a lot of government facilities, high security facilities that you normally don't have access to as a normal civilian. Yeah, so that clearance gives you automatic and very powerful networking, right? Exactly. Great stuff. So what did you see as an opportunity, Jay, to help entrepreneurs and more specifically millennial entrepreneurs with all of the different aspects of their businesses? Uh, Well, it started out with uh, me being a contractor. Um, I didn't have too much knowledge about the contracting world, and I would meet a lot of guys my age um, and younger who were bouncing back and forth to different positions. Um, it has a lot to do with this generation, too. We just aren't comfortable with working the normal nine-to-five job for 20 to 30 to 40 years because uh, we've seen how our parents would get laid off or we've seen them uh, – deplenish their 401ks and not get the benefits that they were uh, justly deserving. Um, you see that now in the new generation that, hey, nobody wants to work the nine to five for the big corporations anymore. Um, they would rather jump around the positions until they find what they truly desire. And I decided, you know what, as a young entrepreneur myself, I really want to reach out to a lot of people who's uh, interested in uh, contracting because more so than that, project work is more so for the millennial. 
they need to have an end goal in mind. So I decided to create a company called Phenomenal Staffing, where we create projects in full-time positions for the millennial. Great. And you talk about more of this stuff in your book, which is called Lead Yourself to Financial Success. Can you elaborate on the premise of the book a little bit more, Jay? Yeah, sure. Um, When I first wrote the book, I wrote it uh, because I wanted to let people know that there were other opportunities out there. You know, I never want anybody to pass up opportunity. So I described some of my um, my successes and some of my failures and a lot of strategies that I use to kind of move up the corporate ladder and create myself a cushion so I could become an entrepreneur. Yeah, Jay, in that book, you talk about your successes and you talk about your challenges, but I want you to focus more on those challenges now, even your failures. Tell us, what was the biggest challenge that you faced in business or otherwise, but what really sticks out in your mind as the biggest challenge that you faced? And our listeners here are looking for the actionable steps that you took to really embrace and overcome that challenge. Um, Challenges is what make you successful. Um, I always embrace all of my failures uh, with the most, the highest regard because I know it's going to make me better in the long run. Um, I guess my biggest challenge thus far has been branding, you know, trying to create a, a path for myself in the all, in all of this clutter, you know, Everyone, because it's a technology age, it's an information age, everyone has access to so much information. And that's a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing. Because if you don't have the expertise, uh, you might portray yourself as someone uh, who who is an expert and might not be an expert. So what happens is there's a lot of people who says they're, you know, coaches or uh um, entrepreneurs, but might not have actually started a business or anything. So what happens is a lot of people are looking for people to help them, but can't find the right mentor because they don't know if the mentor is right for them or not. I don't know if you like Seinfeld, but I do, Jay. And that just reminds me of um, the episode where George Costanza takes a picture beside a Mercedes and claims it has his, has his own and starts showing it off. So, I mean, you're talking exactly. about that fake it till you make it type of thing, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, don't get me wrong. I love it. I love that uh, that path. But uh, it kind of reminds me of Robert Kiyosaki. He's told a story to a bunch of uh, entrepreneurs one day um, in this uh, seminar. And he was saying that his father got mad at him for wearing a fake Rolex. And he didn't understand why. And the Rolex was basically a symbolism of how you were branding yourself. You know, if you walk around with a fake Rolex, what's to say you won't do that with the rest of your career and the rest of your persona. You know, you want to be authentic as possible. It's always good to represent a brand, even your own. Can you give us two or three actionable steps to branding and cutting through all of that noise, like you said, is out there online? Yeah, sure. First, find a mentor, you know, or a mastermind group or do both. You know, Um, when I first started, my father gave me a book called Six Months to Six Figures by Peter Vood. And I had no idea about entrepreneurship at all. I actually started out in the fitness industry and I love working out. I love being fit. I listened to one of your podcasts with a guy named Mike who who has his own fitness uh, website. So that was pretty awesome to hear, you know, how how much fitness is important to an entrepreneur. And um, I just wasn't cutting it in that industry. But uh, my dad actually gave me that book. I read it and I loved it. And so I picked it up and um, I ran with it and decided to join his mastermind group. And ever since then, I started networking with individuals like myself who could kind of help me excel to the next level. Great stuff. Let's talk about some of your clients now. So what are some of the specific challenges that your clients, these millennials, face in launching a new business, Jay? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I guess, like I said, the first one is fighting through the noise. There's so much uh, clutter out there, you know. What's finding finding your niche is a big one too. Um, a lot of my clients, especially the younger generation, they just don't know what it is they really want to do in life. So sometimes they could go through five or six things and still have trouble finding their their true path and their true uh, motivation. And I just tell them to just go out there and try. You know, whatever it is that you're interested in, whatever it is that you might like doing, just go ahead and do it. You never know what the opportunities can bring you. Um, just recently I read a story about a guy who, uh, spoke to Damon Johns, uh, the owner of FUBU and he was describing how he was 
out in uh, Las Vegas and he was driving a a hundred thousand dollar Maserati. He said, "Hey, it doesn't look like you're 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 doing too bad for yourself." Uh, Damon John said, and the kid replied, "You know, um, I actually started out as an artist. You know, I love drawing, I love painting, but I wasn't getting a lot of money. So what he ended up doing is using social media as a platform to raise his to create a brand and raise his uh, social media currency, if you will. And people started following him." And he would sell his T-shirts every Friday, uh, only exclusive T-shirts with his uh, personal painting on it for 25 30 bucks, And that's how he made his living. Wow, now driving that luxury vehicle. And like you said, yeah, good or bad, I think that Q score, that online profile, is certainly important to at least some degree. And you talk about bouncing between four or five ideas before we really solidify that niche, but help our listeners understand some things about overcoming that fear of failure or the fear of breaking the bank, etc., and really honing in on finding that niche, Jay. Um, I would always tell every entrepreneur to pick up economic course. That'll create financial intelligence for them to understand, hey, maybe it's not always about spending the most for a studio or spending the most for uh, upfront business costs. Maybe we should reduce our overhead and start focusing on the brand itself, focusing on customer acquisition, focus on customer service. Because what happens is a lot of uh, individuals, especially millennials, they think, hey, why don't I just go out here, spend a bunch of money and wait for customers to come in? That usually almost never works, 0% of the time. Now, jumping around here a bit, Jay, but you work with millennials in the startup space. Tell us, how has the startup landscape changed since you first started with your business? You know, we do know that as this information age uh, continually grow, um, it is changing ever so fast. And um, the things that I've noticed, especially with social media, is the trends, um, keeping up with the trends. I tell a lot of people, you know, if you want to try to keep up with the trends, you might as well watch the Kardashians. But if you want to <laughs> be your own boss and kind of branch out from the norm, start your own trend. So that that's a big deal to me. Absolutely. Now, Jay, let's talk about why it's so great to be an entrepreneur. Why is it so great to be Jason Taylor? <laughs> I love that question. Um, you know, for me, it's great to just kind of learn from other people, be able to interact with so many different um, individuals like yourself and uh, the customers that I interact with on my, my company, Phenomenal Staffing, and even the millennials I work with during my coaching sessions. Um, I think the greatest thing about being an entrepreneur is the freedom. And I can't stress this uh, enough, you know, being able to wake up, at a certain time, you don't have to be the guy who has the nine to five hustle and bustle, you know, because I did that. I worked at the Pentagon and I had to wake up five in the morning, take the train into D.C. because I lived in Northern Virginia, uh, then take the shuttle to the Pentagon and start my day. That was an hour and a half to two hour commute. You know, for the average millennial, that's just too much traveling and too much time wasted during your youth. You want to spend your youth enjoying your life. Not regretting it. You could spend those three hours every day setting up some affiliate marketing or, you know, starting your own business or a little side hustle that is going to start generating value for people around you and generating some income, right? Exactly. I did a lot of reading, um, especially on entrepreneurship, and that's kind of how I got my start. I just read a lot of stories about the people before me, a lot of biographies. Um, That's what I would also like for your listeners to understand if they can learn anything from what I'm saying today is uh, read, you know, there's a lot of books out there, a lot of mentors. Um, They don't have to be physical mentors that you speak to, but they can mentor you from afar, do your uh, reading and do your research. Uh, I love the entrepreneurs who's heading up the millennials right now, Gary Vaynerchuk and Grant Cardone. These guys are awesome. So, you know, just pick up a book. You talked about Gary V. You talked about Grant Cardone. Is there anybody else that you follow online or use for daily motivation and inspiration, Jay? I'm a big old school friend, fan. I love Les Brown, uh, Jim Ron, um, Zig Ziglar uh, on sales. You know, those guys inspired me a lot when I was uh, first starting out. So I usually stick to those those three guys. Um, Eric Thomas is uh, pretty phenomenal. Um, you know, uh, Tony Robbins. You know. But, uh, yeah, I usually stick to to those top three. 
Yeah, the classics. I've got those three all over my Twitter feed all the time, man. Yeah. <laughs> now, you talked about the importance of social media. In what other ways are you most effectively connecting with your audience? And I want, again, I want you to help the aspiring entrepreneur understand a few things about gaining some traction out there, Jay. Yeah, it's all about communication, um, customer service. You know, even if you're not selling anything, even if you don't have a product or a service to give, you know, just reach out. You never know any there's opportunities everywhere you never know who's who you're going to run into so i i go about speaking to everyone anyone and everyone about whatever it is that they want to talk about you know um just branch out build your communication skills build your speaking skills um you never know what it's going to take or what it's going to take where it's going to take you in the future um and i use that every day you know i had a conversation with someone about youtube channels watching you know a comedy show and that branched over into them wanting to buy a studio and i made them my client over that so it's it's interesting how networking and communication kind of plays out i think what you're saying it's not necessarily all about those formalized networking events when you're in line at starbucks when you're in line for breakfast or yeah you're at a restaurant or you're at your gym create those conversations and create that network in that more informal type of way is that right Exactly. You know, it doesn't always have to be about the sale. Sometimes it can be personal, you know, just reach out, make a friend. Man, you just never know who you're talking to. That's right. Uh, I'm going to be jumping around here a little bit towards the end here, Jay. But the next question is this. Do you love to win or hate to lose and why? Ah, uh, you know what? That's tough. Um, I'm not going to say I hate to lose because that's kind of cliche. Um, but all winners um, despise losing at some point or another. I mean, come on, look at Vince Lombardi. You know, he's the prime example of not wanting to fail. So, you know, obviously that's not the, the goal is to, the goal is not to lose or fail, but the goal is to learn from failing and become a winner. So, um, I love winning, but I love to fail also. Yeah. It's definitely hard to recognize those wins unless we lose, right? Exactly. Now, give our listeners something actionable. Jay, what are you doing to wind down after a long or stressful day? I watch Seinfeld. <laughs> my man, yes. <laughs> yeah, I love watching Seinfeld. Uh, one of my favorite episodes is with George Costanza when he's uh, creating that voicemail. I actually created that voicemail several times <laughs> on one of my work phones. It, uh, some people loved it. Some people didn't get it. But, you know, Did you use big the same tune? Fan. The, the same tune? Yeah, uh, yeah. Believe it or no, not, George, George is isn't at home. It home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great episode. We digress. Now, Jay, I want you to boil this thing down for our listeners. What is the one thing you want to share with them about launching and succeeding with their business? Uh, you know, obviously take the right steps. Make sure you go about it the legal way. Um, but when you first start out, just understand that you're not going to know everything. And that's okay. There's a lot of people in services and products in place that can help you become that brand ambassador or that, that, um, that lead in authority, if you will. So just take it easy when you first get out, but go, go out the gate strong, you know, know that there, that this is a race and that you do have goals and there is a finish line, but, just understand that you're not going to know everything first coming out. Now, Jay, what does the future look like for you and your business? Uh, awesome. You know, right now, with Phenomenal Staffing, we just acquired that contract with Dale and GSA. Um, I was actually supposed to fly out today. Um, I looked at my itinerary, and it's scheduled me for tomorrow. So my company is flying me out tomorrow to Detroit. So I'll be doing some speaking sessions there and also be uh, working with GSA on a government uh, contract getting them set up for a life cycle refresh project. But um, that's my big project right now. And we're going to be using their big name to leverage for, for leverage for our smaller clients for pitches and proposals. So that's what we're looking at right now. Again, great network. Yeah. Now, Jay, if people want to learn more about you and your business and grab a copy of your book, how can they connect with you? Sure. Um, I have a personal page. It's jasontaylor.com. You can go there, check out my blog post, which I'll be starting on uh, late august and you can also check out uh my recent interviews and you can check out my book lead yourself to financial success which is on amazon right now um 
and I can you can also go to my company's page, Phenomenal Staff and uh, phenomenalstaffing.com, where you can see uh, some of the latest trends in IT staffing and um, just get a feel of who we are and what we represent. Jay, this has been an absolute blast. Thank you so much for joining us on Bidzy Small Business Society, man. You take care. Thanks. Bidzy.com is the website that connects customers and respected local businesses. Customers list goods or services they need and businesses bid on them. Customers, if you're looking for a service provider or a local professional, go to Bidzy.com and post your projects for free. Businesses, if you're looking for new customers or a way to expand your customer base, sign up for your 30-day free trial today at Bidzy.com. Thank you for joining us today on Bidzy Small Business Society. Go to Bidzy.com for information and resources on how you can grow your business. Support Bidzy Small Business Society by writing a review and giving us a five-star rating in iTunes. Your positive review and five-star rating will allow us to continue bringing you free, valuable content from amazing and inspiring entrepreneurs and small business owners. Rate and review Bidzy Small Business Society today. 